Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna share something that is really exciting, really delicious, and something you can definitely close off this Labor Day weekend with. In today's video, I'm gonna be making cassava balls stuffed with chicken. A lot of people know this simply as chicken balls. So basically, it is taking this humble root vegetable called the cassava, also known as yuca, and it is boiled, mashed up, and then it is stuffed with a very flavorful chicken filling, very close to the filling that I make for my gyne style chicken patties. So if you wanna see how to put together this flavorful, this easy and simple dish, then you're gonna to wanna to keep on watching and follow me step by step. So let's get into it, guys. To make these chicken and cassava balls, we're going to start off by breaking down our cassava, also known as yuca. So basically, you want to look for some nice looking cassavas in the grocery store. I recommend snapping off the ends while you're in the grocery store to see if they're nice and white on the inside. If they have any discoloration or black spots that you might see after you snap the end, you're going to want to put that one back and not get it because it's probably not good on the inside. So once you go ahead and pick a good cassava, you're going to want to bring it home and you're going to chop it into pieces. You're going to cut off the ends and you're gonna chop it into big chunks like I'm doing here. Then what you're gonna wanna do is take a small paring knife and very carefully you wanna score it on one of the edges. And by scoring it on one of the edges, it's gonna allow you to get in there very easy so you can peel off all of that skin. So basically you're just gonna continue to guide that little paring knife all over and you're gonna peel the skin off of the cassava. Now sometimes as you're peeling it, it will peel off very, very simply and it will just all peel away at one time and you could just rip it off sometimes it's a little harder now by all means if you do not want to buy cassava and cut it and peel it you can of course go ahead and buy the already bagged and frozen version that's in your freezer section of your grocery store that's a great little thing to have and something that cuts down the cooking time um, by a lot now once you've peeled a piece of cassava you're gonna want to cut it in half so this way you can have it in smaller pieces so it will boil faster. Now you can cut it as small or as large as you want. I find that these pieces are just fine for me. I recommend not cutting it too small because when you cut it too small, they tend to cook very fast. And if you're not paying attention to it, they will get very, very mushy. And if you overcook the cassava pieces to make these cassava balls, they will not form properly and they'll be very, very hard to work with. So I'm gonna continue breaking down the rest of this cassava and then I will show you what to do next. So I have a bowl that I filled up with some warm water and I'm going to go ahead and put all of my cassava pieces that I have peeled and that I have cleaned already. Now you want to keep it in water because just like any other type of root vegetable that you peel, it tends to oxidize if you leave it out in the fresh air. You want to go ahead and leave it in some water until you are ready to cook it. Now I just wanted to show you guys how perfect and white these cassava pieces looked. Sometimes when you get them from the grocery store, they tend to have a little bit of discoloration, just depending on how early they were picked and how long they were sitting in the grocery store. But these happen to be absolutely perfect, so I was very lucky to find these today. Again, if you want to go with the frozen version, if that's easier for you, feel free to do that. Now once you cut all of your cassava and you peel it really well, you're going to start the cooking process. So in a large pot that I filled up with some water, I'm going in with some salt so this way it can give the cassava some flavor as it boils. And once the water starts to come up to a boil, you can go in with all of those cassava pieces. And basically you're going to boil it until a fork can go through. Now the fork is not going to go through super, super easy. It's not going to mash right through. It's going to have a little give to it and that is exactly what you want. Because remember, once you're done straining it, it will continue to cook just a little bit with all of that residual heat. So I'm going to boil it and I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it is ready to come out of the pot. While your cassava is boiling, you want to work on all of the fresh ingredients that's going to flavor the chicken filling as well as your cassava when it's done boiling. So I have an onion here, I have a pimento pepper, some weary weary peppers, some garlic cloves, some celery, and I like to use the leafy parts of the celery as well because they have a lot of flavor. I have some thick leaf thyme that I just picked from my garden so it's fresh and it's freshly washed and ready to go in my food. And if you don't have this, you can use regular American thyme. And I'm also going to go in with some culantro. This is also fresh from my garden. And if you don't have this, you can go in with some cilantro. Now the cilantro you might want to use a little bit more of because the culantro has a more pungent taste than the regular cilantro you'd find in your grocery store. Now I'm also going to go in with some scallions. Again, these are from my garden. So as you guys can see, I like to grow a lot of herbs and simple things in my garden so I can throw into my food for some added flavor. And as for all of the spices that I'm going to be using today, 
It's very simple. It is not super intricate or anything like that. These are basic things that you should have in your pantry already. So I have the things for my chicken. These are going to boil with the chicken so this way it can give that some flavor. So I have some bay leaves, I have some Guyanese thyme, I have a little bit of allspice seeds and a little bit of cinnamon stick that I've cracked. Now as for the patty filling, like when I go ahead and saute the chicken after it's done boiling, I have some black pepper, some onion flakes, some paprika, I have some ground basil, some oregano, some garlic powder, some all-purpose seasoning or you can use Old Bay and I have some Guyanese dried thyme. Now this might seem a little confusing with all these different steps but I'll show you step by step on how to put this together right now. So we're going to start cleaning all of these seasonings so this way we can put the dish together. So in my bowl I'm going in with the two Wiri Wiri peppers, I'm taking off the stems. Same goes for my pimento pepper, taking off that stem and I'm putting it in my bowl. I'm going to add in all of those garlic cloves as well. Now my garlic cloves, they're always frozen because I buy a very large bag from the grocery store and I stick it in my freezer for easy access. If you want to use fresh garlic, that is not a problem at all. And the celery, I'm just going to cut it into big chunks. I'm going to put it in the bowl as well. And you want to make sure to cut off the stems on the bottom because they tend to be a little woody and a little discolored. Now a little word of advice, as you guys can see all of these things, I am not chopping them up by hand. I'm going to be adding them into my food processor. That's just going to be something very easy for me to do versus me having to chop everything by hand. By all means, if you're in a rush and you guys need a quick fix, your food processor or your blender is your best friend sometimes. I also went in with my culantro and I'm also going to go in with my thick leaf thyme. Now I'm putting all of these things in the bowl like this and just chopping it up a little bit just because I want my food processor to have a little bit of help. Sometimes these food processors don't get everything nice and cut evenly if you don't give it a little bit of a head start. Now at this point I'm also going to start to break down my onion a bit. This is also going to go in my food processor with the other seasonings. I'm just going to peel it, cut it and I'm going to put it in my bowl as well. As for my scallions, these are what I'm going to add into the actual cassava mixture as, once it's done boiling and I mash it. Remember, we don't just want the chicken filling within the middle to have a nice flavor. We want the cassava outer layer to have a nice flavor as well. So we are going to season that a little bit too. So I'm just chopping these up really, really well. And then we can move on to grinding up the rest of our seasonings. Now all of those ingredients that we chopped up really large and put them into our bowl, we're going to add them right into the food processor and we're going to pulse it until they are nice and fine. Now this totally depends on your own preferences. If you like very chunky seasonings and vegetables within your filling, the chicken filling for the cassava balls, then you can leave it chunkier. If you like it on the finer side, then you can go ahead and leave it very fine and pasty as well. I like it more on the finer side, that's just my preference, but again, do what floats your boat. And with all of those fresh seasonings that you just ground up in your food processor, you're going to go ahead and add it back into that same bowl and you're going to set it aside for when you're ready to cook the chicken filling. Now all of this prep work is going to help us go for a smoother process as we put these chicken and cassava balls together. And as you guys can see, this fresh seasoning paste looks so beautiful, it looks colorful, and of course it's full of flavor. Now we prepped all of these seasonings and spices for the actual chicken filling for these cassava and chicken balls, but of course we want the cassava outer layer to have a really nice flavor. So alongside those scallions that we just chopped up, I went in with some garlic cloves as well as a hot pepper into my mortar and pestle. And basically I'm going to keep on pounding these until I get a very, very fine paste. These alongside the scallions are going to flavor that cassava mixture up really, really well. So this way all of the components of the dish have a nice flavor and they are well balanced. Now this is my little bowl that I have here with the garlic and pepper that I just pounded as well as about half of the scallions that I chopped up before. Remember this is going to go into the cassava mixture filling and then the other seasonings and fresh things that I prepared before those are going to go into the chicken part, the cassava balls. Once all of that prep work is done and the cassava is still boiling, you want to get another little pot of water and you want to start to boil the chicken so this way it can cook and you can get the chicken filling ready. So in my pot, I have some water coming up to a boil. I went in with the bay leaves, the allspice, as well as my cracked cinnamon sticks, and I'm also going to go in with my Guyanese dried thyme. Again, if you want all of these ingredients and measurements all in one place, they are down right below the video in the description box, and you'll see all of the ingredients properly measured out for you guys. 
Now, aside from all of these spices and flavorings, I just went in with a little bit of salt also to add flavor to the chicken. And now I'm gonna go in with two chicken breasts. Now I'm using chicken breasts today. I have used chicken thighs before and those are juicier and fattier. The only thing is I didn't have chicken thighs on hand so that's why I opted for the chicken breasts. These will still make a delicious chicken filling for these chicken and cassava balls. So do not worry too much about what you have, just use what you have on hand. So I'm gonna to continue to cook these until the chicken breasts are fully cooked throughout. Now after about 15 to 20 minutes, my chicken breasts were done cooking. So I'm just taking a pair of tongs and removing them from that water and I'm putting them onto a plate to cool and I'm gonna discard that water that they were boiling. In. Now somewhere along the time that your chicken is boiling or right when your chicken is done, your cassava might be done as well. Just remember you need to keep on checking it so this way you don't overcook it because if you overcook that cassava and it is too sticky and tacky then it'll be very hard to shape into the balls. So just make sure to keep checking it, keep piercing a fork through it and seeing if it is done. As you guys can see mine are done so I'm going to remove them from the heat now. The fork is going through just perfectly and they are ready to strain. So I'm going to strain them out into my colander and I'm going to let those cool just slightly before I start to work with them. Now my cassava pieces have cooled just slightly. I left them for maybe about two to three minutes. You do not want them to cool too much because if they cool too much, they will be very, very hard to mash and you definitely do not want that because you will have a very hard time. Now basically the reason why I wanted to let them cool just a little bit is because I wanted to get that inner membrane out from the cassava. That little stringy bit that's in the middle, you wanna get that out because it'll never mash and if people bite on that as they're eating, it's not very enjoyable and it's not really a good look for your cooking. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and take all of those out very carefully, take your time in doing so, and then we can move on to the next step. Once you finish removing all of those stringy bits from the cassava, you're gonna add in a little bit of butter. Again, we're doing this while it's for the most part hot, so this way the butter can melt, all of those seasonings can mix in, and most importantly, it is easier to mash. So once you add that butter in, you're gonna go in with your potato masher and you're gonna keep on mashing it until you get something that is nice and chunky but also mashed really, really well. And sometimes it does take a little while because cassava is something that is not really like a potato. It doesn't ever get that soft unless you overcook it. So you definitely have to be patient and you just have to keep on mashing and use a little bit of elbow grease to get this done. And once you've gone in with that butter and you've begun to mash it a bit, you're gonna go in with some salt and some pepper to taste and you're gonna add in your ground garlic, hot pepper, and some of those scallions you chopped up, and you're gonna keep on mashing until you get it nice and fine. Now, once you mix in all of your seasonings into the cassava mixture and you mix it up really well, you can set that aside and begin to work on the chicken filling. So in my heavy bottom pot, I am going in with some oil. I'm using olive oil today, but you can use whatever oil that you would like to use. And at this point, I'm gonna go in with all of those seasonings that we ground up. Remember that was the celery, the onions, the culantro, the hot peppers, pimento peppers, and the thick leaf thyme, and all of those things. So I'm gonna stir it up and let this fry up for a couple of minutes. So it's been about five minutes at this point on about a medium to medium high heat. As you guys can see, all of these seasonings have cooked down really, really well. They've become very concentrated and I've cooked out most of that moisture. Now, once you get to this step and all of the oil releases back from all of the seasonings, you're gonna go in with some tomato paste. I didn't mention this in the beginning, but it will be adjusted down in the description box below with the other ingredients and measurements. And after you add in that tomato paste, you wanna cook it down for about another two to three minutes until the tomato paste has a chance to cook down and caramelize as well with everything else. Now at this point, we're gonna go in with all of the spices that we have. So I have my all-purpose seasoning or Old Bay. I have some black pepper, some granulated onions, some paprika, Guyanese dried thyme, garlic powder, some oregano, and some dried basil. Now you can use whatever spices or seasonings you have as I mentioned before, but these are what I'm using today and I'm gonna dump them all in. Basically, I'm gonna stir these up for just about 30 seconds so this way the oil can touch all of the spices and this can like awaken all of the flavor within those spices and add for a really flavorful chicken filling. Now after about 30 seconds, once everything has a chance to marry in the pot, you're gonna go in with a little bit of water. Now I'm using just a few tablespoons of some regular top water. If you wanted to, you could even use some chicken broth or whatever types of broth for this step, but it's only a few tablespoons, that's why I recommend adding the water. 
just to loosen everything up. Now once that water reduces just a bit, you're gonna see that the oil begins to separate again. That's your indication that those spices have cooked really nicely and you've achieved all of the flavor from them. Now at this point, I'm gonna go in with my chicken. Remember the chicken breasts that we boiled a little while ago? Once they cooled a little bit, I put them in my food processor and I gave it a few pulses until I get a very fine brown texture like this. Now some people, they prefer to use ground chicken when making this and they'll brown up the ground chicken and do that. I don't like that texture of that ground chicken, so I prefer to do it this way. But you can go ahead and do it whatever way that you want. Now at this point, I'm just gonna stir this up on a low heat because we don't want this to dry up and then we can taste it and then it'll be done. So I've mixed up my chicken filling and I saw that I needed a little bit more salt and a little bit more black pepper. So I am adjusting those seasonings right now, just adding in a little bit more and I'm gonna mix it together and I'm gonna give it one last taste. And if it is perfect, I can set it aside, allow it to cool for just a little bit and then we can start stuffing our cassava balls. And at this point, the other half of the scallions that we had chopped up earlier, I'm adding them in at this point. I do not like to add it in the beginning of the process to cook with all of the other things because the fresh flavor of the scallions will be lost. That's why I like to add it now. Now it is time for the fun part and it is even closer to the time where we get to try and eat these cassava and chicken balls. So basically I have my cassava mixture here that I had seasoned earlier and I had mashed up really well and I have that chicken mixture in the back that I allowed to cool for about 5-10 to 10 minutes just so it's a little easier to handle. So basically I'm taking about a quarter to a third of a cup size of my cassava mixture, I'm spreading it out in between my fingers and then I am stuffing it with a few tablespoons of the chicken mixture. Now you can go ahead and make these as big or as small as you'd like. I like them more on the medium size, I don't like them too tiny nor too big and you can add in as much or as little chicken filling as you'd like. Now I don't recommend adding in a whole bunch of that chicken filling just because the more you add in the harder it is to close up and they could rip open as well as when they are frying so you want to avoid all of that. So once you go ahead and pinch together the sides really well and roll it into a nice ball, you're done filling your cassava bowl. So I'm gonna continue doing this with the rest of my cassava mixture and the chicken filling until I'm done filling all of them and then we can move on to the frying process. All of my cassava and chicken balls are done being filled. They are ready to fry. There's no need to allow these to rest or anything like that they can fry right away. So I've got all of my cassava and chicken balls lined up and at this point I'm going to go ahead and dredge them in some all-purpose flour. Now I do not like to put a batter over my cassava balls or aloo balls whenever I make anything like this. I find that it gets too heavy and it is too oily. With the flour you get that perfect crispy outer layer and it is not oily and it is not heavy at all. So if you've never made it with just flour on the outside, I totally recommend it. Now once you've finished dredging all of your cassava and chicken balls, you can start the frying process. So in my pan here, I've been heating it up on a medium to medium high heat and I've been using canola oil today. If you want to use vegetable oil or any other like tasting oil, feel free to do so. Once it comes up to temperature, you're going to add it in. And as I said before, every so often you're going to want to go ahead and flip them over. I find that using a fork helps because it doesn't take off any of that flour coating that we put on and it just helps me to move it around a little better but you can use whatever kitchen tool that you would like. So you're going to keep on flipping them, keep on rotating them every once in a while until you get the perfect golden brown color such as these right here. These have been cooking for about 3-4 to four minutes at this point. This is the color that I like. If you like them even more brown and even more crispy, you can leave them in longer. So at this point, I'm going to put them out onto a plate that I've lined with some paper towels and I'm going to allow them to drain and then I'm going to fry off the rest of my cassava and chicken balls and then I can finally eat. Now my cassava and chicken balls are all done. I cannot wait to try these out. So I just cut into this bad boy and as you guys can see, it is steaming. It is still nice and hot. That chicken filling is running all throughout. It is not too much cassava nor too much chicken. It is the perfect ratio. So I'm going to go ahead and dig into these. I'm going to enjoy them just by themselves. If you wanted to serve them with a sauce or some mango sour or tamarind chutney, feel free to do so as well. But other than that, if you enjoyed this video today, I want to thank you guys for making it to the end of the video. Please go ahead and give it a nice big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed yet and join that Matthew's Chinese Cooking family. And of course, leave your amazing comments down below and let me hear from you guys. I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye everyone.